Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, January 9th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, exclusive, an RPG was fired inside the Charlie Hebdo office. Then, is a new cyber attack imminent? And filmmaker Kevin Booth talks media censorship. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, I've got to say, I'm really ashamed of Western media in the U.S. and in Europe. Three terrorists and four hostages are dead today after the French police stormed two hostage situations in France earlier today. Now, this includes the two brothers who were suspected of massacring 12 people at the Paris newspaper Charlie Hebdo on Wednesday. Uh, they were killed while the single hostage that they were holding survived the ordeal unharmed, and the police staged a separate assault on a kosher supermarket in Paris where a second hostage situation was taking place. That hostage taker uh, was believed to be an associate of the two brothers. He was killed. Four hostages there were killed. Several others were injured, while five were able to be released unharmed. Now, it's believed that the gunman at the supermarket is connected to the earlier killing of a policewoman that happened yesterday. But before the suspects were killed, they spoke out uh, via the telephone with a French television station. And here's what they said. Est-ce que vous êtes en lien avec, avec les deux frères qui ont, qui ont fait l'opération à Charlie Hebdo Oui, on s'est synchro synchronisé pour faire les opérations. Vous êtes synchronisé de quelle manière C'est-à-dire qu'il y a encore d'autres événements qui sont prévus Vous avez un scénario ensemble que vous déroulez Non, on s'est juste synchronisé pour le départ. Ça veut dire quand ils ont commencé Charlie Hebdo, et moi j'ai commencé à faire euh, les policiers. Not exactly clear at this time if that shooter meant that he was the one who took care of the policeman that we saw on camera. Uh, perhaps that's why the other suspect that was named turned himself in earlier uh, this week. But al-Qaeda in Yemen is now coming out and saying that they claim to have directed this attack, um, tweeted out actually that it was revenge for uh, the honor of Muhammad. And also it was interesting that one of the suspects there, Saeed, was specific to point out that he had met with Anwar al-Awlaki. And Reuters is also reporting that he did indeed Meet with Anwar al-Awlaki, the U.S.-born and web-savvy, influential international recruiter to the al-Qaeda movement. So, of course, this story is just getting curiouser by the minute. It's not just the fact that these seemingly well-trained jihadists who were so calm that they were able to go back and pick up a shoe. Meanwhile, one of them left their ID in the getaway car, very, very suspect. But now it's turned out that they have also been in contact with someone who spent a little time having dinner at the Pentagon. Here is our writer, Mikhail Thalen, with more. This is Mikhail Thalen with Infowars.com, here with some breaking news. If you look at Reuters right now, they have an exclusive report from an intelligence source in Yemen. Turns out one of the brothers involved in the Charlie Hebdo shooting had actually in 2011 met with uh, Anwar Alawaki, and of course, as many of you know, Anwar Alawaki met with high-ranking military officials at the Pentagon only months after 9-11. And uh, of course, later in 2002, it was later learned that the FBI actually had him in custody due to his ties to Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, and it turns out that he was in custody and let go. So now if we fast forward again, we had Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer on the show in 2012. He exposed the fact that he was clearly working for the FBI. He was a triple agent also involved with the CIA. And so what makes it even more obvious is the fact that if you remember the uh, Christmas Day bombing in 2009 or the attempted bombing by Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib, the so-called underwear bomber, that turned out to clearly be a government-run operation. And we know that um, Anwar al Awlaki was running this guy. Kirk Haskell famously came on our show. He was on the flight. He saw what was going on. And later the State Department under Secretary of State Patrick Kennedy came on and said, yes, we tried to flag the underwear bomber. We didn't want him on the flight, but a, quote, unknown government agency demanded that he get on the flight. So clearly the government was running this. So what this shows is that clearly he was meeting with someone with high connections to the United States government. Now, I've talked to Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, and he believes that um, 
in Rallawaki ended up triple crossing the federal government, and that's why they took him out with a drone strike, as many of you know, in 2011 as well. So does this mean that the shooters are connected to an intelligence agency? Does this mean that there's government involved with this? We don't know, but this is definitely a major point that needs to be shown that clearly he had ties to someone who had ties to the FBI, the CIA, and really the whole intelligence uh, officials. So if you want to keep following us for more breaking news on this, head to Infowars.com. So now, of course, almost immediately it's coming out that the government's knew about these suspects beforehand for quite some time, yet these attacks were still able to take place. The massive NSA surveillance wasn't able to stop these attacks. Of course, it's the same old story, and instantly we're seeing calls for over-militarization, saying that situations like this call for an over-militarization of the police, more NSA surveillance, when indeed it didn't actually stop these attacks from happening. Uh, but it's just that's what it is. Use these crises to call for more tyranny. And that's what we're seeing, trying to keep everyone in this state of constant fear over these terrorists while they're not actually doing anything to stop it. Now, this is coming out of the British Security Service, of course, taking advantage of this hysteria. Uh, this is the director general of MI5, uh, Andrew Parker. He's warning that Coruscant will soon strike. This Coruscant, this elusive group that just sort of popped up out of nowhere, uh, he says the MI5 boss told members of the Royal United Services Institute that a group of core al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria is planning mass casualty attacks against the West. So the likely targets will be transit systems or iconic targets to inflict large-scale loss of life. So this is the aim, keeping people scared of terrorist groups everywhere. Could they stop these potential jihadis beforehand? Absolutely. One of the ways they could do that is by not arming the rebels there, because like we've reported before, these arms are just getting into the wrong hands. And here we have these suspects who spent some time in Yemen are apparently able to get their hands on some RPGs. Now, this is a high-level military source in France who's associated with the French National Police confirmed exclusively to InfoWars that at least one rocket-propelled grenade was detonated inside the the Charlie Hebdo building. Uh, the French National Police kept quiet about the RPG to keep from scaring the public, and it also, of course, explains why they released very few images from inside the office. So the suspects were known to the government officials for years, able to travel from Yemen, get their hands on some RB RPGs, um, but of course are never caught and are allowed to carry out these attacks. We've seen this so many times before, time and time again. And when these suspects were first identified, uh, there were conflicting reports of if they had been to Yemen, had they not. And then, of course, now it comes out that they did. And now they have ties to the Pentagon. What else did we know about these suspects? I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com with an update on the Charlie Hebdo attacks. The Charlie Hebdo massacre suspects were on the U.S. no-fly list for years and that they trained with al-Qaeda in Yemen. It says the two suspects behind the Charlie Hebdo massacre in Paris have been on a U.S. no-fly list for years, a U.S. official said. According to different revelations, one of the suspects trained with al-Qaeda linked militants in Yemen, Sharif and Saeed. French-born sons of Algerian parents were both logged in the U.S. government's Terrorist Identities Data Mart Environment System, which is called TIDE, a database on known or suspected international terrorists. U.S. counterterrorism sources said on condition of anonymity. So stay tuned for more reports. I'll keep you updated throughout the day. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. Now, the hacktivist group Anonymous has come out to say that they will avenge Charlie Hebdo attacks by shutting down any jihadist websites or anyone affiliated with them on social media. The group released a video and a statement via Twitter with a message for al-Qaeda, the Islamic State, and other terrorists, and it was also uploaded to the group's Belgian account. The group says that they're going to track down and close all accounts on social networks that are related to terrorists in order to avenge those who have been killed. A backed up statement on Pastebin said, freedom of expression has suffered inhuman assault and it is our duty to react. Now there's also an opcharliehedbo.com that uh, we found earlier today and it's actually a countdown clock on, on, on this website. So it's giving like a day, sort of a countdown, uh, but the official 
op Charlie Hebdo is saying that that's not, they're not responsible for that. They're saying it's a fake, it might be a scam, avoid it. So if you click there, you'll see it's kind of this countdown clock. They're saying they're not responsible for that. Now, officials have also come out saying that they're, you know, they're warning about a cyber Pearl Harbor. So here, if this op Charlie Hebdo is saying that they're not responsible for creating this, are we going to see a Pearl Harbor and then maybe blame it on Anonymous? We'll just have to wait and see. But now this is coming from the chairman of the House Committee on Homeland Security, Michael McCall, and he's here using this Sony attack to call, of course, for stricter cybersecurity legislation. Um, he's, you know, this is, of course, despite the fact that cybersecurity experts refute the claim that North Korea had anything to do with it. They still say it was more likely an inside job. But of course, our government is going to just continue to say that we need tighter restrictions on the internet. Now, McCall says that the real significance here lies in the fact that, according to the FBI, this marks the first major destructive cyber attack waged against a U.S. company, and there are little to no consequences for conducting cyber attacks. So criminals and nation states are becoming bolder in their threats and their behavior. So of course, what would be the answer here? More laws, more legislation, not, not doing anything to actually protect our critical infrastructure. Now Snowden kind of alluded to this as well. Uh, he was being interviewed for an upcoming, I believe a PBS documentary. And he said that the United States efforts to dominate cyberspace Maybe, maybe misguided and are ultimately damaging to the country's national security. They're playing the wrong role, basically. The NSA is actually standing for the National Surveillance Agency rather than the National Security Agency. Uh, he's basically calling for the NSA to defend us from internet-based attacks rather than going out and targeting foreign countries and exploiting uh, vulnerabilities, because this is... This is if the foreign countries that we are attacking take this similar cyber posture and start trying to attack America's critical infrastructure. We have a lot more to lose because we are so dependent on the Internet. Our tech industry is basically the backbone of America. And Snowden actually spells it out here, and he says that they don't even have to target power plants. All they got to do is target the core routers that tie our internet connections together and take down entire parts of the U.S. by just simply hitting these core routers. And of course, because of this, we should focus on making a more secure and reliable and trusted internet rather than one that is set up on a system of exploiting vulnerabilities and that the NSA is actually making us weaker. But it's interesting to note that Snowden kind of backtracked on something that he was uh, saying in this, the transcript here. He's basically explaining exactly what CISPA is. It, CISPA is the government saying, play ball with us, or the NSA saying, play ball, and we will give you legal immunity. He says, cyber intelligence sharing between private companies and government agencies is basically granting total immunity to private companies if they share all the information on their customers, immunizing companies in a way that allows them to invite groups like the NSA or the FBI if they voluntarily you know, put these surveillance devices on their internal networks. They're gonna immunize these companies for giving your information to the government willingly. But then Snowden sort of backs it up and says, oh, you know, I think that's a little bit too complicated for the American people to understand. So I don't understand where Snowden's going with this. He's basically saying that the NSA is bad, but then he's saying that we need tighter restrictions here, tighter regulations, um, basically saying we need a government that's not a gang style form of governance. Well, coming up, award-winning filmmaker Kevin Booth joins me in studio. We're going to talk about the attack on the free press as well as the changing tide in the drug war. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high-quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet,